Obama administration right now, they would point out that we've had 62 straight months of job growth. Unemployment is at 5.4%. Uh, things are at least on paper presumably better than 2008. Um, how would you respond to that? Well, I would respond on several levels. Yes, let's be fair, we have less unemployment than we had a while back. But let's also be fair to what those numbers have to tell us. First, millions of people have dropped out of the labor force. They have been unable to find work and have gone into other pursuits, working at home, working in illegal pursuits of all kinds. We have forced them out of the very possibility of a reasonable, steady work life. That's a serious problem. Number two, large numbers of people have left the country to go back to the places from which they came. They were never really properly counted in the first place. They're impoverished where they're going. They are coming back as soon as they can. Nobody calculates that into the story. But perhaps the most important thing is to see what the jobs were that were lost, well-paying jobs in many cases, skilled jobs, jobs with union representation and some security, have all been lost and been replaced by part-time work. That has to be counted in there. That's Zoomed. Work for temp agencies. Work with little or no benefits, little or no security. For the mass of the American people, that's why the statistic that unemployment has come down is overshadowed by the realities of what the work life for themselves is. And to give you just one more example, over this fixing, the actual indebtedness of the American generation, the 20 million odd people that go to colleges and universities has gotten so severe that we're beginning to have strikes of impoverished students who can't ever pay back the debts they have to run up to get a degree which means less and less in the work market. You put all that together and there's no surprise and no mistake when the masses of Americans feel and say there's no recovery for us in the basic economic situation we face. Right. The, uh, uh, mm -hmm. the job, the workforce participation rate is around 63 percent which is lower than it's been in decades. Um, there are some who argue that that's actually a positive thing that was the result of Obamacare, that some people were hanging on to dead-end jobs just to get health insurance, and now they don't need to do that. There are others who suggest that this is actually an indicator of a serious problem within our economy. And wage growth is essentially flatlined basically since, since the Reagan administration. Uh, I'm curious your thoughts on those two stats. Yeah, well, I think there are always people who... Uh, for reasons of befuddlement or, and I don't want to be impolite because they're serving another master, have to always suggest to us that a number that is clearly problematic may, under some special circumstances, possibly be interpreted in a good way. To have millions of people leave the labor force is a very serious problem. Uh, think of it in the simplest way. The more people work out of our population, the less work each one has to do to take care of the needs of our population. But of course, when people leave the workforce, the job of producing what we need as a society falls more and more on fewer and fewer people. If you ask any random sample of American workers, they'll tell you they're working more hours, they're working under greater intensity. That's also not captured in the unemployment statistics. That's a result of people leaving the labor force. And I won't even go into the fact that the more people leave the labor force, the less of them are in a position to get a job, the less of them are likely to keep the skills they acquired, to keep the work a mentality that we all know goes into a job, the long-term costs of having people leave out of desperation, which is where most of them have left, because the surveys all show it, the more damaging the results. We're not having a, a fewer people in the labor force because we've decided rationally to decide uh, as a nation we would like to have fewer people working. We'd like to have more leisure. If we were going to do that, we would distribute unemployment equally among the people rather than having some people working overtime while other people have no work at all. Yeah. Let me turn next to the question of wages. 
Well, the most severe problem for most Americans, if they will talk to you honestly, and most will, is they don't have enough to take care of the basic needs they have as people. They're borrowing money to give their children educations, tens of thousands of dollars. We are the only advanced in industrial country that now has a generation of students emerging with a BA, which isn't all that much in the job market, and carrying ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in debt, and many carry much more. That's because the family hasn't got enough money to pay for something so basic as education. And the same is true of many of the other needs. We're seeing a shrinkage in the average square footage that people are living with because they can't afford the living space they once could have. So if we don't raise the wages, we are not dealing, in fact, with the single most important problem most Americans have when it comes to economics. And we have not done anything about the basic wage situation in the United States. Last point. If you keep in mind that wages have gone nowhere over the last six or seven years, or indeed over the last two decades, but meanwhile millions of people have left the labor force and aren't getting those wages and haven't gone anywhere, then you don't have any mystery in understanding why our economy is in such doldrums. We can't buy anything the way we used to. We can't grow the demand for goods and service the way we used to because the basic consumer side is impoverished and needing to borrow. And of course, if you borrow, then the future income you earned is not available to you to spend. It has to be used to pay off your debts and so goes back into the banks who are themselves churning the money with the heads of the big corporations. And therefore, the only thing that's really spectacular are the rising tall buildings in New York and San Francisco, the wild prices that a speculation around real estate produces, the big paychecks for the CEOs. But again, for the mass of people, an economic system that isn't working for the majority.